I think more than personal term limits, just constitutionally, it was over a half century ago we imposed term limits on the executive branch. I think to have balance, we should have term limits on the legislative branch and on the judiciary. Yeah. Yeah, here's the thing, though. It will have to come by constitutional amendment. But there's another kind of term limit we have to get done that we could do statutorily. We call it civil service reform. Because what we have to do is prevent career bureaucrats from creating their own fiefdoms in the federal government. And so if somebody spends four years working in Washington, that's cool. But then they're going to be transferred out to Phoenix City, Alabama, or Phoenix, Arizona, or Fairbanks, Alaska, to come out and live in the real world. And it may be inelegant, but just as farmers use crop rotation, I think we ought to have bureaucrat rotation through the system. We do it in the military and in corporate America. Yeah, I don't have a question, but thank you. I want to make sure for the video. I just want to show them this is the second thing you've come. Just to make sure that was captured for the video. Thank you, sir. I just want to say, J.D., what you know, John, personally, or Pat Dillington, he's the most vindictive, abusive person I've ever run into. citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. Senator Jacob Howard was one of the principal sponsors of the 14th Amendment. He made it very clear in his floor speech the intent was this. If there were those from the diplomatic corps or aliens in this country, they were subject to the jurisdiction of their home countries, not the United States. Ergo, their children would not be granted citizenship. Section 5 of this says the Congress shall, by appropriate, red, uh, uh, by appropriate legislation, enforce the provisions of this article. That means we can use statutory language. In my Enforcement First Act, there's an entire component dealing with returning to the, the original intent of the 14th Amendment. Okay, Mr. Amendment, sir. Along with term limits, would you be willing to commit to reduce or eliminate pensions for the Senate, for the Congress, and the bureaucracy? And uh, excluding military pensions. Well, you know, one of the things going on, here, it's really interesting what the internet gets started. When I got back home, I was meeting with a retired Air Force colonel, and so just out of blue, and they so what are you doing with all the money? I said, excuse me? Yeah, I read on the internet, you're, you're, you're given your full salary for life. I said, what? Yeah, yeah, it's right there on the internet. Now, there used to be an incredibly outlandish system of pensions, uh, but when Reagan and Tip O'Neill got together for the Social Security uh, bipartisan revamp in the early 80s, they also put Congress into the mix. 
members of Congress are constitutional officers, but they live, uh, they're regarded as federal employees. So we do, when you serve the Congress, you do pay into Social Security. And you do have a retirement savings plan akin to what happens in other businesses. Uh, it takes you, and this is why I certainly hope that we send a Republican to Washington, it takes you three terms to get vested. And knowing your current incumbent is living off so many pensions and Social Security without earnings limit in Congress, we certainly hope he'll have a chance to come back as a citizen just that short of vesting. I have real problems completely eliminating retirement funds for anybody. But outlandish pensions, I think the only guy who still lives under that is John Deagle, because they carried out Robert Byrd a couple of weeks ago, and obviously he never lived on that great big picture. But it's a legitimate concern. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, there was a negative campaign about your involvement in some chemical product. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. And, and let me more generally speak about this. In retrospect, I was I was asked to, to appear in an infomercial. Um, in retrospect, it was the wrong thing to do. Uh, I don't believe it damaged the country, but it hurt some people, and uh, it was the wrong decision. And that's all really I can say about it. The question becomes, and it, it, it's too bad Mary isn't here, but my, maybe it's not because she could spend hours talking about my faults because she knows me better than anybody else. We all make mistakes. And the question is, are these mistakes made in a way that profoundly affect the future of our country, or are the mistakes more personal in nature? That was a mistake in judgment, which I regret. And... Um, but to my way of thinking, there's only been one perfect man who's walked the earth, and I expect him to come back, but he's not on the ballot in this election. So uh, I think we're allowed to.